the obvious stuff. Work by past clients in Sphere, but how do you do it in a modern world? Doing open houses, how do you do it in the modern world? Having a geographic farm, right? You know, do I still do direct mail? Yeah, definitely still works. Um, matter of fact, the flight to quality today for all my clients that have been consistent geographic farmers for years are killing it, right? We know that there's always like the core four, an online presence, a digital presence, online advertising, social media marketing, all kind of falling under online. Those four, but as, as the world began to adjust, right? And, and I was mentioning to Sherry because my former COO and good friend uh, was born and raised uh, in Beijing. We were watching COVID at the end of December and then in January. So we, we were watching it sort of in real time and we knew it was coming our way. And I started already thinking about what are the adjustments we need to make? How do we help our clients make this digital transformation, not only in their day-to-day -day life and working in home on Zoom and everything else, but also how does the marketing need to change? How does the messaging need to change? And how does the offer need to change in order to be relevant? Think about it, my friends. So I wrote this down for you guys and, and I'd love just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go at you hard and fast with just two or three things that I know are working today. Um, so here's the first one. Write down in your notes, how many, how many people are in your database right now? In your database, in your CRM, you know, 100, 500, 1,000, 800, one of my one of my clients says seventy four thousand people in his database. Yes, he's a team. And he does a lot of digital advertising. Right, he uses Boomtown. Right, so he's got you know, I mean, an agent with north of seventy thousand past clients in Sphere and leads is pretty bananas. What's your number? Then I'd ask you this question: What are the key questions you've always been asked by everyone that knows you? What's what's the question? I've spoken all over the world. I've, in Israel, speaking in Tel Aviv. I was in Istanbul. I've been to Sydney, Australia. I did a, a recent Zoom session with some clients down in South Africa. It doesn't matter where I go, my friends. There's one consistent question you get asked a hundred times a month if you're paying attention. And it goes something like this. Hey, you're in real estate. How's the market? Now, for years, I've said you should answer that question by saying, well, it really depends. Are you looking to buy, sell, invest, or rent? Because they're all very different. Which part of the market are you interested? Trying to flesh them out. That's not what today's about. Today is the recognition that when someone asks you, how's the market? We're in the US. You know what everybody was thinking in the month of, end of March, end of April, most of May? Everybody was watching the unemployment numbers. God bless them, they've gone down and it looks like it's gonna continue to do so. Here's the thing, you ready? Everybody's asking, how's the market? But there's two questions that that, that, that single question actually represents. When someone says to you, how's the market? What they're really asking you is, how much is my home worth? How much is my home worth during COVID and after COVID and beginning of COVID? Like, have home prices changed, specifically my value, right? And then the second question is, people are asking, how's the market? Because we're looking back at the closest experience to this, and that would be 2007, 8, 9, right? And everybody's thinking, are prices off by 10 or 20 or 30%? I guarantee every one of you out there, you're a good agent. And at the end of March or the beginning of April, you got an offer with a COVID letter attached to it that said, the reason why my buyer wants a 20% haircut on your price is because of this, right? Everybody was getting that. And then it kind of went away, but it's still there. So here's my question, you ready? If you're still working from home or not, or maybe some combination of, what if I told you the agents of mine that are killing it have sent an email out to their entire database. So you ready? Here's the email. The offer is, are you curious about the value of your home during COVID and after, question mark, right? Are you curious about the value of your home during COVID and after, question mark? As my past client, as my friend, as you know, as a, you know, however you refer to the people inside your database, in my tribe, I'd love to offer you a 15 to 20 minute session where I'm gonna walk you through some historical values, show you the real-time data of the multi-list service, right, the MLS, and show you what the smartest economists are saying about home price values in the future. That's it. I'd love to invite you for a 15 or 20 minute session. We'll do it on Zoom, right? Safe, whenever you want, or if you're really smart, write this in your notes, speaking of systems, which we'll get to, Write down calendly.com. 
it looks like calendar, but it's L-Y at the end. And if you Google it and you misspell it, it'll be the one that you see there. Calendly.com, where I can include a link in the email where I say, you know, if you'd like to book a 15 or 20 minute session, just click the link below and pick the time that's right for you, right? Who, who wants to chase and go back and forth saying, oh, Tuesday at four, no, how about four day Friday, right, right? You don't want to do that, it's a waste of time. Calendly.com, you just simply hook it up to your Gmail account or your Outlook account and you block the times that you're available. And you know what, just like my hairdresser, I don't call him and say, hey, Jair, I need a haircut. I go on the app and I say, no, oh, he's open Saturday, 9.30, book, right? Same thing. Now, imagine, imagine if you sent that email out to 100 people in your database. What kind of response do you think you'll get? Well, most of you will say, oh, I'll get a 30% open rate in my email, because that seems to be about the average, especially if they're your past clients in Sphere. A 30% open rate, and what you're gonna find, let's say it's 100, that's 30. You'll have about 15 people that say, yeah, I want that. Now, here's my question for you. If you suddenly had 15 people, don't send it to 70,000. Don't, don't even send it to 1,000, because you'd have 300 open it, and you'd have 150 people say yes, and it's all you would be doing for the next month and a half. Pay attention. What we're trying to do, write this in your notes, is we're trying to flush out the research seller. We're trying to flush out the research seller. You know, the person that's thinking about making a move, but they're uncertain. We wanna do something, maybe one school, uh, you know, in the fall, we wanna do something over the holidays. You know, we wanna move next year, right, spring. Whatever it is, you're trying to flesh out the research seller in your database to spend 15 or 20 minutes to educate them, to answer their questions. And here's the hook, you ready? You don't book 15 or 20 minutes, you slot 30 minutes. Because when it's good, you don't wanna go, well, got another one, gotta go, right? 15 minutes is up, you take 30 minutes and here's what's gonna happen. The vast majority of them are gonna say, oh, hey, thank you so much, Sherry, I really appreciate this. I was really curious and how are you doing and how's the market? And I, you know, I, I'm hearing rumblings that, you know, the unemployment's impacting us. Is that true? What's going on? And I know you're all fans of uh, Keeping Current Matters. And if you see the slides that they put out, I think three weeks ago on our This Week in Housing show, where we showed the actual breakdown of the unemployment, like the sectors, right? It really sheds light on, has it really impacted home buying and selling, right? Fascinating data points. So you share all this information and then the ones that are interested are gonna say, well, how do you do it? Can you do it safely? You know, does it make sense to have strangers coming into my house? Like they're going to ask you those questions and you and I both know those are called buying signals. So that's the first thing. Easy, easy. Send an email. If you're a bomb bomb fan, shoot a video, but you could also, if you're a newer agent and you want to get the word out, you can also shoot that on video, put it on Facebook and Instagram and boost it to a 15 mile radius by simply saying, Hey, it's Tom Ferry with ERA. I get asked this question 114 times a month. How's the market? And I know what people are really asking is, Tom, is, you know, is the value of my home gone down during COVID? And could I get a deal if I wanted to buy a house today because of COVID? So in order to help you, I really need to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. If you'd like, I'm booking 15 to 20 minute strategy sessions. Click the link below on Zoom, pick the time that's right for you. And I'll spend 15 to 20 minutes with you answering your questions and showing you the real-time data of what's going on in the market or something better, right? That's the first one. All my clients that are doing that are killing it. One made the mistake of sending it to a thousand. Don't do that. 50, 100, 20. Now write this in your notes, you ready? But Tom, I'm not really good with Zoom. And what, what if I do something wrong and I haven't learned how to hit the share button yet and to show my MLS? Write this in your notes, please. Done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. And as I mentioned to all of my clients, especially with whether it's Zoom or uh, Microsoft Teams or you know Google, there's so many different, you know, web, you know, go to webinar, like there's so many ways to do it. What we know is this, everybody's on the same path. Everybody's going through the same thing. So don't worry about it. I jokingly say, if the dog doesn't bark and my kid doesn't walk by and your cat doesn't, you know, come up and get close to the screen, you're not human. Done is better than perfect. Let's go to number two. Uh, long time, long time client, long time friend, scout Christina Martinez, uh, Northern California, San Jose specifically. I was her coach when she was, uh, we got her to be number one in the world for C21. And I think she was there for a couple of years and, you know, phenomenal human being, uh, spiritual woman, 
uh, difference maker, spent every Saturday and Sunday at her church, you know, bought a building next to her church and donated it. Like she's, she's that kind of human being. And by the way, was making millions of dollars in the process. When I first took her on as a client, I always look for like, what is this person doing that's special, different, unique, right? Like what makes them stand out? And then my, the way my brain works is, can I make that repeatable and scalable? You know, can I, can I repeat it? Can I duplicate it over and over again? Or is it kind of a one-off, right? If I can repeat it, then the next question is, can I scale it, right? Can I take it from, you do it once a month to 10 times a month. If there's two people there, can we get it to 100 people there? Can I scale it? And in her case, it was very simple. She would meet with people and say, what's your retirement plan? And they'd say, oh, Christina, I don't have one. She'd say, great, but you own your home, right? Yeah, okay. Why don't you and I sit down together at my office for 20 or 30 minutes, and I'll show you how I'm helping my clients sell their existing property, even though they don't want to, buy a newer home that gets greater appreciation, and a duplex, triplex, or fourplex, so they can eventually have a retirement plan based on owning real estate. And guess what? By the time I got her, she'd have two or three couples once a week, you know, Thursday night at six and, you know, serve some tea or coffee. She wasn't a drinker, right? So, you know, donuts or whatever they would do. And guess what? She was onesie twosie this thing. And I said, Christina, we could put this on steroids. Like your heart's in the right place. You're, you're leading people down a really good path, right? You're getting them to sell this property. There's no doubt the new construction is going to get greater appreciation. And a duplex, triplex, fourplex also gives them a business to own, greater write-offs, the asset, the rents, and everything else. I said, I said, I love the model. So you know what we did? We made it repeatable and we scaled it. And the last event that I went to with her, there was 1,400 people, 1,400 people at the Fairmont in San Jose. And it was like, it was like a, it was like a, you know, a realogy convention, right? You know, full stage, right? She's up there doing her thing and I'm in the front row clapping and, you know, people are running to the back of the room to book appointments, to meet with her. It was unbelievable. Well, I looked at that strategy and then I said to myself, Zoom had 10 million subscribers March 19th. By the 1st of April, there was 200 million subscribers. Now, I haven't looked since. I know it's more. Hum, are you an investor in Zoom? No, right? No, I do invest in a lot of companies, not in that one, but boy, do I wish I did. But here's the thing. Everybody's there. Sherry knows my my mentor, uh, Joe Hanauer, right? Former chairman of the board of uh, Realogy, who's someone that just means the world to me. We'll meet for a drink once a week. Guess where we meet? We meet on Zoom, right? That, that's the world today. So I said, okay, everybody's stuck at home. Everybody's curious about the value of their home. There's a lot of people that are in certain marketplaces that are thinking, is now the right time I want to sell? How can we flush them out and do it in a safe way? Write this in your notes. You ready? You got to take advantage of the still perfect storm. You got to take advantage of the still perfect storm. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to email your entire database separately and all of your old leads and you ready guys? And maybe even mail it to your geographic farm and offer it to them. And then I want you to personally invite seven, eight, 10 of your, you know, your best leads that ghosted you, you know what I'm talking about in March and April, right? Now they're kind of circling back around because you're going to do for the first time ever a 30 to 45 minute seller seminar done on Zoom. Yes, I just said it. Now, some of you are like, oh, I thought it would be hard enough to be on Zoom and, you know, or whatever, you know, platform I use and talk to my clients one-on-one. -on -one. Now you want me to do a seminar? Yes. About nine weeks ago, we started talking about this with all of our clients in Pivot as first we said, let's do it as a buyer seminar because that's easy. What are the five mistakes to avoid in buying a house during COVID, right? How do you do it safely was really the question, right? And remember, there was a time when it was a little more wonky than it is today. So... We started teaching this, and then my client, Dave Robles, on the west side of LA, he said, Tom, I'm not going to do it for uh, for buyers. I'm going to do it for sellers. And I was like, Dave, because you're smart. Well, how about this? Because it's a little more recent. I mentioned my client, Jill Biggs, right? Listed like 43 houses in Hoboken, like pretty good agent, right? And Hoboken's a tiny little town on the Hudson River, right? New York City here. She's here in this little one mile by one mile radius. She'll do about 500 transactions this year, wildly successful. And... She says, okay, I'm going to do it because that's how Jill talks. Okay, you've been talking about it, coach. You've been telling me. I know, I know, I know, I know. And she's busy, right? So 
the Tuesday after Memorial, which now feels like a million years ago, but I guess that's 10 days ago, the Thursday prior to Memorial, she did her first seller seminar. On Monday, she emailed her entire database, right? Join me to learn the five mistakes to avoid in selling your home during COVID, right? I'll answer all of your questions and give you everything you need to know so you can make a good decision. She did a video about it, put it on Instagram, put it on Facebook, boosted it out, emailed her list with a link, here's the hook, to a registration button on Zoom. Did you know that when you book a webinar on Zoom, and I use Zoom, I don't know the other platforms, I've been on Zoom for three and a half years, so if you don't use Zoom, use yours. Here's the thing, you ready? When you go on Zoom and you schedule your webinar, there's a little tab that says register. You click the register, and now when the person gets the link, they have to go in and write Tom and Kathy Ferry, here's my cell phone, here's my email. And just like that, you capture. So when my client Dave did it, he had 78 people. He's on the west side of LA. The average sales price is like a gazillion dollars. It's bananas. If they're showing up, what do you think the $400,000, $200,000, $800,000 price range shows up? They're all going to show up. And guess what? His first one, he said to me, hey, Tom, only 40% of the people actually showed up. They registered, but only 40% showed up. I said, Dave, Google webinar registration versus show rate. And he's like, oh my God, it's 40%. I said, you're right on track, partner. But because you did the register, you have all of the names and email addresses and phone numbers of all the people that were interested, but for whatever reason, couldn't show. Jill did the same, right? Ended up with 25 people on there. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very candid with you. For anybody that, that Jill's with Coal Banker, so if any of you know her, you see her, you know, sort of in passing of, you know, multiple conventions, um, she's, she's like most top producers. She's fantastically crazy. She says to me, oh, Tom, everything went wrong. And I'm like, done is better than perfect. Tell me about that. She said, oh, first of all, you know, we ended up with some buyers on there and sellers. She said, and I, you know, I just kind of, you know, couldn't get the PowerPoint working, couldn't get this working. So I just looked in the camera and talked to everybody. I'm like, okay, so everything went wrong. Got it. Perfect. Right. Perfect. So what was the result? She said, oh, it's great. She goes, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like I'm a good agent. I know how to dance. I know the mistakes to avoid. I had prepared all my stuff. So it was a little funky in the beginning because I didn't have it, but I just delivered and I killed it. And I feel so great. And I'm like, I'm waiting, right? Because, you know, what do I really, what do I really want to know? You had 25 people on there. What do I really want to know? I said, did you get any listings? Oh, of course. I got three immediately. I took them all before Monday. I'm like, okay, good. Three out of 25. She goes, and I got five that are in various stages of cleaning up, getting their apartment ready, getting their condo ready to go, you know, polish, paint, clean it up, yada, yada. She goes, so I'll probably get eight out of it. Eight out of 25. Eight out of 25. And as she said, everything went wrong. So what could you do? Now, I'd love just for a moment to say to you this. A lot of people, when I share this, they say, well, I'm not a presenter, Tom. I don't have Sherry Chris's, you know, charisma. Jill Biggs, like, I'm not that level of crazy. I'm a little more subdued, right? Remember two things. Number one, your vibe attracts your tribe. Your vibe attracts your tribe. So the people that are like you are the people that are like you, and they like, love, respect, and trust you. So they know you're going to show up, and the lighting's not going to be great, and you're going to flub your words or flub your words, or you're going to be perfect and articulate and totally organized. They know it. You have all spreadsheets, right? They know you. Do it anyway. But here's the second thing I would say to you. If you're going to doubt something, if you're going to doubt something, you with me on this? If you're going to doubt, oh, can I do it? I don't know. What if nobody shows up? What if I'm all by myself? You know, what if I totally destroy it? Will I kill my brand? If you're going to doubt something, doubt your limits. But don't doubt this strategy because it's working every day all over the world, my friends. If you're going to doubt something, doubt your limits. Here's the third one. This is an easy one, but I have to ask you a question first because this is all U.S. based. Um, do you know how many homes there are in the U.S.? Do you know? I can see some people that are able to uh, to chat there a little bit. Um, do you know how many homes there are in the U.S.? It's 128 million. There's 6 million that are owned by institutional investors, and there's 16.7 million that are owned by like people like you and I. They just own properties. Here's my note. Are you working the non-owner occupieds in your market? Are you working the non-owner occupieds in your market? Are you working the non-owner occupieds in your market? 
what if I told you the vast majority of agents, when I bring this up, they all go, oh, I used to do that, but the market's been so good the last 10 and a half years, I stopped. And then I say, there's 16.7 million properties owned by individuals like you and I, and there's another 6 million owned by institutional investors. Forget the institutional investors, go to the mom and pops. Send them all a handwritten note, right? With a birthday, you know, birthday cake stamp, hand addressed. Hey, Sherry, I was looking at your property at 1234 Banana Street. I know you've owned that rental property for a few years. I'm curious with everything happening in the world and home price appreciations, have you had any thoughts of trading up, trading down, or 1031 exchanging that property into a better asset? I'm here to serve. Let me know if you have any questions. And yes, I always have buyers for properties like this. Let me know. And you start doing that. And guess what, my friends? The good agents are going into Remind.com and others, and they're finding, they're finding all of these opportunities, all of these opportunities inside the not owner occupies. The stuff that isn't as obvious. Now, I'm going to do something silly because I'm actually going to walk behind my desk and I'm going to ask all of you, because I only got three minutes and I obviously clearly prepared too much content, but I'm going to show you guys something. So watch how fun this is going to be. I want you to take a screenshot of all of, can you film it? There we go. Take a screenshot of all of the systems that we recommend to you. Take a screenshot of this. Because I'm not going to have time to go through all of that in three minutes, right? So you can see CRM, email service provider, marketing, social. You can see lead generation. You can see doing your meeting, Zoom, go to meeting, et cetera. You can see uh, tracking and measuring. I like CSU, conversion, call, you know, call action, lead management, whatever your broker has, right? And then project management, Trello, Asana, et cetera. Evernote is the extra brain, and the secret weapon is right here. The secret weapon is Crystal Notes. So, Sherry, I'll forward that over to you so you can get a copy to everybody else. And what I would love is, obviously, if you just took all of you know, each individual brand's preferred software providers and just throw it inside there. Because you can see with all my notes, it's like use whatever your broker has, because that's always the best one. Now, as I wrap, I want to say this to you. There's 1.4 million agents in the U.S. From, from what I can see in just talking to all of my CEOs and managers and brokers, about 45% of the agents in the last 90 days have completely ghosted their business. They have completely ghosted their database. They have completely shut themselves off from doing anything when it comes to buying and selling real estate and helping their clients. Now, one side of me says, congratulations, there's less competition. The other side of me says, we need to get them back. Because when you look at kind of where we're at today with a, a social crisis in our country and a health pandemic crisis in our country, which created then a financial crisis in our country, every one of us knows in 789, housing basically brought us into the global economic crisis. In this case, everyone is saying the same thing. Housing is going to lead us out of the financial crisis that our country faces today. So I would challenge you. I would challenge you to think beyond your current limitations, to decide that you can do exponentially more. Don't be thinking in ones and twos. Be thinking of how do I add 10 or 15 or 20? Because the consumer flight to quality today has never been stronger. And the number of times I heard over the last 90 days, oh, I got another listing coach. Oh, where'd that one come from? Because that's not on our normal radar. Oh, well, their existing agent basically said, we can't sell your home and there's nothing we can do, so we should take it off the market. And then the consumer saw all my sales and my track record and called me and hired me. That's kind of tragic. We need to get our friends back working again, and we need to get out there and help more buyers and sellers. So I got to bounce. God bless you guys. If you're not following me on all the social channels, check me out there. And thank you, Sherry and everybody, for allowing me to contribute. Let's get to work. Let's keep moving forward powerfully. Take care, my friends. Well, that was great, Tom. Thank you. I want to buy a house on Banana Street. So if anyone knows of a street in your community that's named Banana Street, let me know. 
Uh, anyways, great content, Tom, as always. Thank you so much for being with us. A couple of things that I wrote down. Done is better than perfect. Love it. I'm a perfectionist. I need to start doing more and not making it perfect. So I commit to trying to, trying to start that today. Also, your vibe attracts your tribe. This is our tribe. We're all in this together, folks. And those of you who took the time today to listen to Tom, who's absolutely amazing and a good friend of mine, I hope you walk away with one or two tips that will help you be better in the months to come in dealing with your clients, your database, and helping people move on to the next phase of their lives. So before I go, uh, first of all, this session was recorded. And so you can go back and review it time and time again. And for those agents who did not have a chance to see it, hopefully your broker will show it and have it uh, available maybe in groups if you're coming back into the offices. So final thing, next week, June 17th, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time, a technology summit with Modern Ventures. Modern Ventures is one of our partners. What they do is attract up and coming tech companies that are doing great things. You won't wanna miss this because there's some incredible technology that's emerging in our industry that will help all of you. So Constance Friedman is the um, principal of Modern Ventures. She'll be joining me along with several of her Modern Ventures partners that will be showing you technology. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a great rest of the week. Sell lots, be happy, keep in touch, and we'll see you next week. Bye.